What's going on, buddy? It's Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. All right, guys, something that we need to talk about. And some of you guys are probably going to put in the comments saying like, oh, hey, you know, you were wrong about this one or wrong about that one. But this kind of has to do from a bigger perspective and talking about these stocks as a whole. So I saw something on the internet and I'll share this with you guys. And it, you know, it has to do obviously with shorted stocks and I will focus in on AMC a little bit later, but I saw something on the internet uh, the other day and it was a, it was a much more updated, um, you know, tweet. This is all the way back from January 9th. It was much more updated talking about SPACs, right? Where SPACs are now from where they were, you know, a year ago, you know, maybe even a year and a half ago, if you invested $10,000, what your investment would be worth as of right now, if you held through the entire thing, and some of them were as low as, listen, if you invested $10,000, it's only worth, you know, 400 bucks as of right now, you lost 98% of your value. Some of them were 70, 80%. You know, you look at some other ones, you know, Lucid, um, some other of your, you know, your, your EV uh, SPACs that, you know, were supposed to be the, the rival against Tesla. And it really just kind of got me thinking that, listen, like nobody talks about SPACs anymore. Okay. You know, you, this article came out all the way back in, in June, you know, SPACs wipe out half of their value as investors lose appetite for risky, you know, growth stocks. And nobody talks about these anymore. You know, they, they, they made their hit, they made their run, they had their attention on them. And they're just not, you know, focused on anymore. And the reason being for that is because the entire market that we're in, you know, uh, investors have gone away from, I've, I've mentioned this numerous times, they've gone away from those, those risky speculative stocks, you know, that are based on future valuation, okay, or that they have just, you know, complete ulterior motives, such as targeting companies that are heavily, heavily shorted you know, trying to put enough buying pressure to squeeze these shorts, okay? And you're, you're not only, you know, putting enough buying pressure on these companies, okay, to just squeeze the shorts, you need to attract buying pressure from other traders and investors first in order to bring up the price, then to potentially put some heat on the shorts. And, you know, I continue to see, and I really just kind of turned a blind eye to this, and that's why I want to talk about it, but I continue to see people talking about you know, stocks that are heavily shorted and they're going after them and this and that. And, you know, yeah, they, they may get their, their small little pops, you know, here and there, they pop up a little bit and they always come right back down. Okay. You know, the, the, these institutions, you know, can clearly see where retail, you know, money is flowing to, and they also see exactly when the money stops flowing to them. And they either, you know, might exit their position very quickly and then just ride it right back down, or they just add to their position, you know, or, you know, do nothing and they continue to, you know, ride the price down, new shorts pile on and so forth. And it's, it's very easy for these funds to see them. Okay. And my whole, you know, you know, point behind making this video, and I've said this for quite some time is that, you know, like the, just the focus isn't there. All right. You know, we, you know, I have this chart in AMC and I'll talk about this in just a minute, but we look at the entire market. Okay. Over the last, you know, since the start of the year, you know, we're, we're moving down, we're getting these bear market rallies, we're moving down. Okay, the economy is in a very rough spot, the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, people are slowly starting, you know, to lose their jobs, you see these layoffs, although unemployment is still a little bit low right now, people are struggling to, you know, be able to, you know, per, you know, buy, buy food, put food on the table for their families, as well as be able to heat their homes if they live in cold areas, as oil is wicked high, put gas in their vehicles. We're in an entirely different situation than we were, okay, back in 2021, when life was merely a fairy tale, okay? You know, you, you were, you know, we're living free. If you worked in an office, you, you know, were working remote, you know, okay, you were getting, you know, free checks from, you know, from the government, okay, everything was, you know, fairly cheap, fairly easy. And it was, we were living this high life. Money was cheap to borrow. Companies were borrowing like crazy. They were investing like crazy. And that's where these stocks were running like crazy, okay? And my point behind all of this, and I, I, I continue to see just, you know, some of these stocks, this one was, was, was brought up to my attention a little bit while ago, you know, Mullen, which is ironic because this one was actually a SPAC and it's, you know, trading at like, you know, 20 cents, Okay. Um, th there was another one that I, I, people were talking about was, was, you know, meta materials, which sure there's opportunity for a setup above, you know, th this $2 price point. Do I think it's going to get back to, you know, where it was at $21? 
Okay, probably not. Like I said, we're not in that market, even though they have a reserve versus split at this time. But, you know, the setups are kind of there, but the attention isn't there. You know, people had asked inside the group, you know, Jeff, are you are you, you focusing on this stock? You're focusing on that stock? And my answer was, listen, I haven't focused on any small cap. I continue to hold AMC. I haven't focused on any small cap in pretty much this entire year. And the reason being is because the attention isn't there, right? I'm, you know, every, you know, you look at where the focus is going, it's going to the indices, all right? You know, you know, SPY and QQQ just went to zero day expiration options. And while I am giving no, you know, suggestion to potentially even look into those, okay? Because they will, you know, you know, tear some people's face apart, okay? I, I don't play zero days. Um, you know, the, the point behind it is, well, if they're making these zero day expiration options, it's because that's where the attention is. They're playing these large caps that are volatile. They're playing the indices that, that are very volatile. And eventually SPY will move, okay, maybe 60, 70, you know, cents, you know, maybe a dollar in one day, you know, their total range. And you're going to see these other, you know, stocks start to run hard and, and run hard. And we'll get back to that, okay? Everything runs in cycles. I mentioned this numerous times, whether you have the patience or you have the understanding, you know, or belief on this, it, we will get back to a euphoric stage inside the market. Will it happen within the next six to 12 months? Cannot answer that, cannot promise that, okay? Will it, will it go back to the, you know, extreme of, of, of euphoric that we were in and, you know, this fantasy time of, you know, 2020 and early 2021? cannot answer that, but we will get back to a euphoric stage. My point behind all of this is when you hear people talking about other stocks, I mean, this is even, you know, another one. Yeah, sure. It had a, you know, a nice rip up to this $9. Just know that it continues to come back down and it's going to come back down. And if you're someone that can get in these stocks very quickly, get out very quickly, you're not being greedy. You don't have FOMO. Okay. Well, one, I, if you are that person, I think there's plenty of other, you know, opportunities. If you have free capital as of right now, then, you know, going after these, but just know that they come back down. They're not running as hard as they, they would, and they're not being stretched as far as they would. Meaning, you know, if a stock was able to run potentially over the course of 30 to 60 days, you know, literally running, you look at, you know, Microvision went from a dollar to, you know, almost $30. Okay. You know, whatever, you know, percent that is, just know that that, that distance and, and that, that gain is going to be much smaller right now because we are not in that easy money policy, that, that, that free money, that cheap money, okay, that speculative, that, that euphoric, that heavy greed, and people are going to be exiting much quicker. They're going to take their 50, 60% gains, and they're going to get out of them, which 50, 60% is, is great, okay? Just like I said, they're manipulated. They're heavy manipulated. The attention isn't there. The volume isn't on these, and your chance of getting burned is just a lot greater, okay? So that is one thing I want to talk about. When it comes to you know, AMC. Well, like I said, guys, I've mentioned this numerous times. I still hold AMC. All right. I was, I did play some options on them, which, you know, clearly they've all, all expired. Okay. Um, you know, going over the last, you know, pretty much, what was it? Six, 17, 18 months. As of right now, I still hold my shares. I'm a little bit red in my position. Most importantly, I can afford to hold these shares. All right. I continue to play other op, you know, other, other stocks, mainly options as of lately. Um, you know, and continue to, you know, invest in other things as, you know, outside of the entire market. And like I said, I have that ability to do so. Will AMC eventually, you know, get, get back to a, a point of strength when it comes to when the market turns around, you know, will it put pressure on the shorts? Absolutely. Is it going to be able to run like it did? Okay. Even though some people thought that this was an undercut, will it be able to run like it did? Well, that remains to be unseen because we're not in that same, you know, euphoric stage. Okay. But just wanted to give that, you know, picture as a, as a whole, I know some, some people are probably going to, you know, you know, put something in the comments saying, you know, whatever people put in the comments, you keyboard warriors, but just want to give that, you know, as a whole, you, you, you've watched the same, you know, story of, oh no, this one, this one, this one, this one. And inevitably it gets front loaded by somebody. Okay. It gets front loaded by somebody or, you know, you know, some institutions or a multiple group of people. And a lot of times people are left burnt. All right. And you, your chance of successes right now running after something like that is just smaller than what it was. Okay. So I continue to see people talking about this and this and this, and it's literally the same story over and over and over. Just understand that when it comes to AMC and GameStop, they were very, very unique situations. Both companies were severely struggling. Okay. They were, you know, facing insane, you know, uh, revenue hits AMC, even more than GameStop once the COVID, you know, virus had happened. And those businesses have begun to, you know, reposition themselves and shift. They're a very unique situation. So anyways, guys, I hope this video finds you well. I hope it gives you a little attention. If you're interested in, 
you know, learning anything about options, you can, you know, come join the group. It's, it's, it's pretty much pennies. I make it so that, you know, really just to cut, try to keep out, you know, people that, that are spamming. Okay. There's a ton of information look it up on, on YouTube, educate yourself. We've been in this play for quite some time. There's a lot of knowledge that could have been learned over the past 12 months since I've really been stressing like the, 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 the you know, profits that you can pull out of the market. Okay. By learning a solid strategy, you know, becoming consistent will far outweigh whatever any single play will give you. And I, I truly mean that. Okay. So check it, check it out. You've still got plenty of time guys. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.